is one of my favorite of farts, things that's ever happened. You know, it's not <laughs> farting. Are these delivery trucks by Amazon? <laughs> well, I like there's that. There's segways, and then there's segways. Give me something right. to talk about here. Let me for a let me minutes. share this here. Are we get, do you want to show the video of what uh, Amazon released? Uh, is Amazon going to sue us? Jeff Bezos, or do you want man. This? Yeah, make it smaller. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, uh, hold on. Rewind. All right, Amazon. <laughs> not this one. Not this video, Tim. Not Let's this one. Let's go to give this me that one. Electrek article that shows it. Okay. Because I think the Electrek article bum, does a better bum, job. Bum. Of it. There we go. All right. Amazon this morning, uh, or last night, I don't know, um, unveiled their uh, Rivian-made electric delivery van. So we've talked about this before. I believe Amazon ordered 1,000 of these, and Amazon at the time had already invested like $2.5 billion into them or something crazy like that. Uh, And... Yeah, so I'm sorry, $700 million round of funding led by Amazon initially, and then they also announced that they would order 100,000 of these electric delivery vans, which wasn't even a product that they were making. It wasn't even a thing, but it just seemed like, oh, yeah, we could do that, you know? And uh, I think this is fantastic. Um, So we've got a couple images here if you scroll down a little bit. Amazon has so much money they can just order something that doesn't exist. (laughs) Well, Hundreds you know, thousands. it's about Prime. You know what I mean? Like, uh, this is probably a, an episode of some show where, like, eventually Amazon's just going to have a guy show up at your house with stuff that they think you're going to want. And just like, Uh-oh. hey, you know, let, let, like like he has a trench coat on. He opens it like, hey, you want this watch? Check out this watch. It's really nice. <laughs> we saw, we saw you know? you were surfing last night. <laughs> I think that's where they're going. It's like next level stuff. Like, uh, I mean, Google does this with their little... Google Now page where it like shows you articles that it thinks you're going to be interested in mm-hmm. just based on, you know, all the data they collect about you 24/7. So, we have some images here. It looks a lot like the van that I checked out called the Modec, which is an old uh actual real electric delivery van that um for its for its time, I think it was like 2006 or something was fantastic, but uh it's like a big gray box, um way better looking headlights than the actual Rivian truck, uh but kind of shout out to them. Um, and we don't know a whole lot of details about it yet, but uh, it's pretty great. And um, according to uh, the Rivian CEO, RJ Scaringe, uh, he had a quote here saying, the vehicle we've developed with Amazon is not just electric. We prioritize safety and functionality to create a vehicle that's optimized for package delivery. We thought through how drivers get in and out of the van, what the workspace feels like, and what the workflow is for delivering packages. So Amazon released some features here, uh, state-of-the-art sensor detection, uh, a suite of highway and traffic uh, assist technology and large windshield to enhance driver visibility. I like that safety stuff. Exterior cameras around the vehicle that are linked to a digital display inside the cabin, giving the driver a 360 degree view of the vehicle. Uh, Alexa integration for hands-free access to route information. Sorry for triggering everyone's uh, things there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just say <laughs> Which bull. is kind of funny. Yeah. So you're like in the car and you say that and then it like tells you. I feel like Okay, maybe that's a bit too much, but maybe it's just an easy win for him. Um, A strengthened door on the driver's side for additional protection. Very important. A uh, dance floor inside. We know Tim will love that. Uh, The the driver's cabin for easy movement inside the van and, you know, getting down to get down. Uh, Bright taillights surrounding the rear of the vehicle, you know, because taillights are important. Uh, and three <laughs> levels of shelving with a bulkhead door, which can easily be opened and closed by the driver uh, while on the road. So, yeah, cool stuff. Uh, production of this um, should start, uh, let me see when it does it say. They should have uh, 10,000 of these on the road as early as 2022 and all 100,000 by 2030. Uh, really cool stuff. Oh, uh, you know, excited about this. Might turn into this van life camper van movement i don't know <laughs> i think tim oh, you would probably awesome. use this for your launches and stuff right oh in a heartbeat yeah honestly like i want a long range just practical box on wheels basically you know yeah i mean i think ben price too would just die for a, a van life vehicle like this i mean this is this screams like you know uh make you know makeover and like gut it on the inside and just turn it into the coolest camper ever. So that, that piques my curiosity. Can, can a normal person buy one of these? Like no, if, 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 right if you have a flower delivery service, could you buy 
one of these vans and wrap it in your own whatever? <laughs> this was made specifically for Amazon. So this one, I don't believe so, but Dang there it. might be things like it that Rivian adds to their lineup. Um, mm. But they as should. of now, it seems like there's a lot yeah, of people that could we don't have any from news that. on that. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And now, Tim, can you share that other video, uh, the the Twitter thing that I had? Because I had, I was uh, picking picking up my son from school one day, driving home, um, and you know, on my phone like I always am. And uh, as I'm driving, I noticed an Amazon Prime delivery van that is a hundred percent electric. And so I posted the video on Twitter. Now, this is actually a Ford Transit van, so it's different than the Rivian one. Um, and I believe uh, Sean from The Verge replied because he got a response here that Ford uh, and Amazon were just testing this out, and they had like 15 of these, and San Diego was the place where they were testing it. And I've even seen Amazon commercials where they show these from San Diego. So uh, well, there's, thought, mo- there's we, a lot going on we here. We saw one of these, didn't we? When we were, Remember when we were recording the podcast together in L.A., basically, oh. right after Cybertruck? Didn't we see one of these like right as we're going to that WeWork space? Maybe. I, I kind of remember being like, well, wait, the we were vans all like, are everywhere. I don't know if it was electric. But it said, I remember it said 100% electric. And we're like, what the heck? But we didn't get any footage of it or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that must have yeah. been. But but those are not Rivian. Those are Ford. Now, ironically, or you know, weirdly, Ford is also an investor in Rivian. But uh, my understanding was that those had nothing to do with Rivian whatsoever. Hmm. 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 Um, can I just say that the whole... Last month, like I, I cannot believe it's taking until 2020s to have an electric delivery vehicle. I feel like the USPS could have had those those USPS little stupid trucks. They don't go more than what 20 or 30 miles at best. Why on earth aren't those at least hybrid or easily fully electric? Like that is like the bottom well, of the barrel, the greatest savings you can have because you're just stop and go doing short range stuff. Like this is. They could have paid themselves off, you know, instantly, basically. Yeah. Right. I mean, check, check, pull up that link I just sent you, actually, because this, this isn't. You're, you're totally right, and, and, but, but it's, it's not. This is, this is like finally they're doing it again. But uh, there was a thing called uh, the Modec from Britain, um, and it started back in 2002. Oh, right. And it, it was a, it was a delivery, uh, electric delivery vehicle. They had three different models of it. The uh, I forget what they're called, like the um, the flatbed style, the one with the uh, the the back, and then another one that you could just buy and put on whatever you wanted. And FedEx, uh, they changed the name and sold it in the U.S. called uh, Navistar in 2010. And um, and and uh, the FedEx and uh, I think UPS and maybe a few others actually did buy some of them, but or Coca Cola bought some. But they were basically all just uh, show cars. Um, and, and the, the orders, I think they had sold like 400 of them ever kind of a thing. Mm. Um, and it ended up tanking out and I, th- I believe it got around a hundred miles of range. So, that's so actually like that's for, for 2006, a hundred miles of range. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Remember Tesla didn't even like exist back then. Like electric yeah. cars were very much nascent, you know? I just feel like a lot of these like delivery, you know, U- UPS, USPS, FedEx, but then yeah. even like, uh, I mean, just so many things that you think about go short range distances all every day, all day, every day, basically. And they don't exceed a certain range and they're just constantly wearing out brake pads, you know, all this stuff. That's the worst type of thing for an internal combustion engine, uh, yeah. you know, for a normal vehicle. That's where you're going to get the worst gas mileage is where you're going to have the most wear and tear on your car is constant stop and go. And where an electric vehicle has the greatest room to improve. Um, that's one of those things. I just don't understand how it didn't start there. And then yeah. go into like the the you know cars the 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 car that m- mm. us m- me and you want to buy it should have started in these like weird niche markets where there's the greatest savings potential and is the lowest hanging fruit I just cannot believe that yeah. it's coming after like we have consumer cars that are cross country tripping like the hardest thing to do you know what I mean well a hundred percent and I and I have a great segue for that but Joe I wanted to was there anything you had on this you were thinking no. <laughs> no, right, no. Well, I mean, I, I agree with Tim. Like, I always thought, like, when when Tesla first announced the semi, I was like, um, the the yeah. business use case for these kinds of vehicles, I think, is is, is far stronger than the passenger use case because 
uh, you know, we talk about the the difference between the total cost of ownership on a car versus like what you have to pay every month, you know, and, and how normal people have to kind of calculate for what they have to pay every month. But for a business, for somebody that's going to be getting that much use out of a truck for a really long yeah. time, that's that's a far more accurate calculation for, you know, how they want to spend their money. And, and it is an investment that they could, you know, get some, get a loan for or whatever if they need to. But so it makes more sense to me for those use cases. And, and I, I kind of agree with Tim. I, it's, it's, it's kind of funny that it went from passenger to that instead of the other way. Thousand yeah. percent thousand percent agree hey guys thanks so much for watching this clip from our show if that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode you can go to olfpod.com slash yt and if you want more from us you can consider becoming a patreon member you'll get early access to episodes you can join our awesome community you can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash patreon so thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks everybody.